Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk about Bitcoin. We can see that we are still uh, looking pretty bearish on the on-chain, as we can see here, right? Still red moving averages. When these turn green, though, uh, huge, huge uptrends follow. Right, so we're really just waiting for that for some macro trend to form. But as of right now, if we're looking at structure, if we're looking at patterns, if we're looking at where we are in terms of momentum, uh, it looks pretty bad. Uh, to put it, just put it bluntly. Sorry if you're expecting good. It's bad. It's really bad right now. We've lost the bull market barrier yet again. Okay, uh, we do still have this measure move here that uh, could potentially come into fruition. That is obviously uh, for this channel, right? We can see uh, from one side to the other here looking pretty <clears throat> looking pretty bad right now, right? Because we already lost that trap zone area. Okay, we tried to reclaim it. We just got wicked into it twice. And now, uh, yeah, looking pretty bad. So if this does want to head up, it's it's unlikely. But again, we're still just looking to get over this $60,000 region, right? $60,500. Uh, in my update today, this was the trade that we're targeting. Uh, basically looking at the liquidation, uh, kind of not heat map, but li liquidation levels based on open interest and volume. And we can see that, uh, yeah, the, there is a, a 10x one, this blue line here, uh, up at 62.4. So we're looking at that right now and potentially expecting to hit it. Obviously, we are super bearish and we do have trades towards the downside here, right? That trade would be from essentially losing this wick here, okay? And uh, yeah, 55.4, that kind of area, taking a trade for 2%, as I talked about in Patreon this morning, right? Uh, taking a trade for 2% down here uh, to this low potentially, right? Uh, and just kind of initiating inside this measure move coming through. But you could also take uh, a bigger trade here uh, if we do lose kind of 50, 50, 52, seven, that kind of area, all the way down to 48K, a bit riskier, but uh, yeah, if the trade's there, there's money to be made for sure. Uh, and yeah, it's justifiable to say the least, right? So we got this trade first, and then if we go lower than that, I would expect a bounce at the bottom here around 53K anyway, but if we wanna go lower than that, then uh, yeah, it's around that, 50, if we lose that 52, eight area, right, then we could be targeting these, uh, <clears throat> these 10x liquidation levels as well, okay, towards the downside. So really, we're just we're just targeting either of those right now. Uh, if we do want to break over 60,500, you guys know the drill. We're looking for about 62.3, uh, and then uh, yeah, I mean that that would bring us up to here on the on the macro, right? So just underneath our volume weighted ATR bands, all right. And with that, yes, I mean I would expect some downwards momentum to follow after that. But if we do get above 65k, that's when things start to get full on recovery um, kind of momentum side, right? So uh, yeah, that's really what we're looking for on all fronts. So just to summarize, we're looking for a short here from 55K down, or we're looking for a long from 60, 60,500, okay? Uh, and then besides that, yeah, I mean, not too much else to talk about. We are just chilling inside this range right now, bouncing off these 15 minute volume weighted ATR bands with pretty substantial bounces to say the least. Now I've noticed this usually after massive moves like this, we like to oscillate around this fifth, uh, the 15 minute. Uh, so I'm not saying blindly like short into this or something, but when we do break structure after hitting it, uh, then yeah, I think there is an edge there that could be taken advantage of to both sides as well, right? So I mean, if you had just blindly shorted here, you would have made serious money. If you'd have blindly longed here, you would have made serious money as well. So uh, yeah, I mean, there is an edge there to talk about, but that's more of a ranging strategy. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I don't really have too much else to talk about here. Sorry, it's not a long one, but uh, yeah, I mean, we, we don't have that much to talk about. That's, it's just being honest here, right? I'm not gonna waste your time anyway. Uh, and besides that, yeah, I mean, We've got this, uh, we've got, sorry, I'm, I'm super sick right now, guys. I'm trying to get some energy, but uh, we can see this this trend line coming through as well around 44K. So this would be my absolute low bottom for Bitcoin right now uh, if we do have an, uh, an intense crash here. Uh, we're, I was talking about this with Chester today as well. Uh, this is actually um, a little bit black swanny. It looks, it looks like it is black swanny right now, particularly if we head down here. And the reason for that is when we get a black swan, it's, it's the opposite to uh, a parabolic curve, right? It's an inverse parabolic curve. So a parabolic curve goes like this, an inverse parabolic curve goes like this, right? And uh, typically the way you can judge whether that's happening or not is through structure. So we can see this trend line here. We did hit it here, but if we head down from this point, it means we wouldn't have hit the trend line and we would have made a steeper trend line, right? And then uh, you would expect that to kind of cascade uh, to even lower where we don't hit this trend line 
and we make a new steeper trend line and it just kind of free falls from there, right? So a bit of a hint that potentially we get a swan event soon. We are seeing uh, billionaires starting to sell off their shares as well. This, this happened before uh, that great C that great C word, right? Uh, yeah, this happened uh, around there as well. Where, where is that? Is that, where is this? Where is this? The crash, the big crash. Oh, it's this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, mate. Yeah, so this crash, this, this is exactly what happened here, right? So we can see we had this structure here, okay? After trying to kind of recover, we didn't hit that, and then we just cascaded down from there. And it's a lot easier to see that on like a four hour, but now we're gonna lose it, right? <laughs> So it's not great. Not great here. I'm just trying to fill this video with time, but it, it is valuable. It is valuable what I'm saying here. Yeah, I just can't find this. It's fine. It's fine. But uh, yeah, just warning signs potentially that we do get a black swan soon. So just be careful out there. Uh, this is something I've been talking about with my brother a lot today. So um, yeah, we'll see how this develops. But that is going to be it from me. Have a fantastic day. Enjoy your weekend. Do not trade over the weekend. It's a bad idea. But there are edges over the weekend that we do know exist. One of them being the CME gap. So uh, yeah, if we do have a gap over the weekend form then we look to fill that gap within the next week which will just be a trade in that direction okay that's gonna be it from me have a fantastic one peace out goodbye from me hamilton